Hey guys, this is Henry from Obedia, and today we're going to be talking about the general menu of the Preferences window in Studio One. So, as you can see, we have a Studio One song already loaded, and if we want to open the Preferences window, we can just go up here into Studio One and then click on Preferences. Another way to open it, and I'm going to close it just really quick so you can see it, you can also basically just um, press command and comma and it's also going to open it. That's a shortcut for the preferences window. Okay, so here's your preferences window. We have five different menus on this window. There's the general menu, the second is called location, then we have audio setup, then we have external devices, and then we have advanced. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're only going to be working on the general menu of the preferences window. The general menu of the preferences window has five different tabs, okay? General, appearance, keyboard shortcuts, network, and touch input. We're going to start with the first one, which is called general. The first option that um, this general tab gives us is it's related to when Studio One starts, okay? So you can select what happens when the software starts. It could either do nothing, open last song project, open default song or project, or create a new song. I like to leave it in do nothing so that when Studio One starts, it's going to ask me, do you want to create a new song? Do you want to create a new project? Do you want to open something that you've already done in the past? I like it that way. However, let's say you're someone that knows for a fact that every time you open it, you're going to be creating a new song, a whole different new idea. You might just select create a new song. And it's just going to create it every time you open it. I'm going to leave it in do nothing. You also have the check for updates option. So when Studio One starts, if this option is checked, it will try to find new updates. Or at least check. Okay, if you have a steady internet connection, I would just leave it on. So every time it opens, it's going to see if there's a new update. If there is, you can install it. You don't have to. Now, if you're not... Uh, a person that likes doing updates, you can just leave that off and just run whatever current version of Studio One you have. I'm going to leave it on for, um, for this tutorial. Then we have our language uh, selection. Uh, if you click on the drop down list, you can select whatever language you like. We're going to leave it in, in English. So that's the general tab. Now we have the appearance tab. Basically, this is all related to the color of the windows. If you click and drag all of these uh, sliders, you can modify the color of the window with things as such as contrast, luminance, saturation. Let's say that by some reason you you were you know playing with this and you didn't like what you did like right now, and I want to go back to the original. I can just click on reset. Boom back to basics, back to the original version. If you find something that you like, let's say here, you can store the preset or you could load presets. I'm gonna leave it to in, in, in you know I'm gonna leave it to the default way by clicking on reset. I like the way this looks so I'm not gonna change it. Then we have this keyboard shortcuts tab. Uh, the way this works is basically you have a list on the left of the screen a list of operations and functions in Studio One uh, that you can select and then, for example, show effects. The show effects function already has a key, a, a, a key associated to that function, which is F7. Um, however, you can switch it, you can change it, or you could add. Let's say, for example, this one, uh, show cloud. There's no keys associated to that, so you can enter one. So basically here you can change all the keyboard shortcuts of the program. I tend to leave this default because I like to learn the way Studio One wants me to do things. Uh, but you could change that or you could um, map the functions of other DOS such as Sonar, let's say Pro Tools, Logic, Cubase, whatever. You could map that so Studio One will work with those um, key commands. I typically just leave it as Studio One. I don't, I don't change anything from there. But you could if you wanted. 
The next tab is the Network tab. Here's where you can basically allow remote control apps to discover this DAW. Um, I normally leave that default. And the last one, which is a touch input tab, this has to do with multi-touch devices. Personally, I don't have any multi-touch devices connected, or at least controlling Studio One. So whatever I do here doesn't really matter. It's not going to affect me. So I'm just going to leave it default. So these were the five um, tabs of the general menu of the preferences window. I hope this tutorial was um, educational for you. If you have any other questions, please call us at Obedia at 615-933-6775. Thank you very much. Today's Pro Audio hardware and software can give you excellent results if you know how to use it properly. Obedia can help you to get the most out of your Pro Audio hardware and software. Why spend your time scouring the internet for answers or digging through manuals? With one quick call to an Obedia technician, you'll be connected with someone who can give you the answers that you need in real time via phone and remote desktop. Obedia technicians are trained in all major digital audio applications on Mac, PC, iOS, and Android devices. Obedia member subscriptions are cost effective, give you great member benefits, and Obedia is here seven days a week to help you get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software. No matter what your level of expertise, Obedia can help you to stay focused and productive and get your music back on track. Start taming your technology today with Obedia.